a mighty new weapon concept was born in the early years of the new millennium. It was the multiple kill vehicle, a high precision machine that could target several threats at a time with a single launch. By releasing a flock of smaller weapons, the multiple kill vehicle, or MKV, would be capable of accurately addressing a threat and intercepting both real missiles and decoys before any harm reaches the nation's borders. The Pentagon's project would struggle to generate much traction during its early years, but it said that the promising device might just be the weapon America was waiting for. Next-Gen Warfare As the world's superpowers continually try to step up their games when it comes to the aerospace industry, risky and almost impossible designs usually come to the surface. One such design was the first system capable of destroying multiple ballistic missile threats and decoys with a single launch. The multiple kill vehicle was a transformational program that added to the capabilities of a warfighter and was designed as a force multiplier for all land and sea-based weapons of the integrated mid-course missile defense system. It would also boost U.S. missile defense capabilities, making them more effective. These next-generation systems provide interceptors with the ability to defeat multiple complex threats with a single launch, and could potentially thwart an attack with only one missile that would in turn release a cluster of objects, including a warhead and several look-alike decoys. The vehicle's purpose was to keep people safe. Ideally, any incoming missile should be destroyed before it reaches its target, and the MKV was the part of an interceptor able to strike an enemy warhead and limit its ability to cause damage by using the force of impact alone. The hit-to-kill force of impact technology, pioneered by Lockheed Martin, is the current standard of all U.S. missile defense systems. In contrast, the MKV program's aim was to create smaller and lightweight vehicles without sacrificing lethality. Fully integrated, the payload's design would fit on both existing and future interceptor bombers. In case discrimination proved challenging, one or more vehicles could be queued to intercept credible targets within a threat cluster. Moreover, MKV was potentially able to solve most of the toughest countermeasure challenges that could surface. After the launch of an enemy missile, a fully loaded interceptor vehicle would track down its target by running data from the ballistic missile defense system uplinked to a seeker installed in the carrier vehicle fitted with a set of sensors. Once in outer space, the seeker would spot all objects posing a threat, namely the missile itself and any form of countermeasures launched to disrupt national defenses. The carrier would then deploy smaller vehicles in large numbers and guide them to destroy the targets. While engaging an enemy, the Divert and Attitude Control component is designed to handle the carrier vehicle. Together with all the 8 to 20 smaller attack vehicles, Control would maneuver them towards the threat's path. By having the enemy in sight, the carrier vehicle would be able to disperse the attack vehicles and guide them accurately to a direct collision that would destroy them in mid-space. This strategy, referred to as many-on-many -many fighting, completely eliminates the need for extensive pre-launch intelligence. What's more, the ballistic missile defense system's discrimination capability is leveraged, and a robust and affordable solution is ensured against emerging threats. Implications Led by Lockheed Martin Space Systems Company, the MKVL development team has worked on the project for the Missile Defense Agency, or MDA, as far back as 2004. Critical design reviews and hover tests took place during the following years, while flight tests began in 2007. Two operational prototype seekers were built with a state-of-the-art infrared large-format focal plane array. Most specifications remain classified. However, it was known to feature a low-risk, high-performance, liquid-fueled divert and attitude control system. An individual MKVL was about the size of a loaf of bread. Notably, the small warheads were kinetic energy-based and further equipped with their own navigation thrusters. These vehicles weighed about 10 pounds. The modular design approach was supposed to allow for several configurations in the number of kill vehicles deployed, as to address a broad range of scenarios. In addition, the program sought to demonstrate the feasibility of this machine by using conceptual designs, analyses, simulations, flight testing, and key hardware trials. Both existing and emerging miniaturization technology was evaluated to be integrated into a functional system in the future. 
On December 2, 2008, a test was conducted at the National Hover Test Facilities in Edwards Air Force Base in California. The team included Lockheed Martin, the prime contractor for the multiple kill vehicle L payload system, as well as Pratt & Whitney Rocketdyne, a United Technologies Corporation, and Octan Technologies, Inc. According to several reports, the objectives were achieved, including having the MKVL hover under its own power. Furthermore, its ability to recognize and track targets in a flight environment was proven, and its propulsion system demonstrated maneuverability while tracing a target. Also, the vehicle transmitted video and flight telemetry to the ground. In accordance with the MDA's layered approach to ballistic missile warfare, the vehicle provided numerous opportunities to destroy an adversarial missile, increasing the possibilities for a hit on the warhead using a single target cloud. Hence, the system was supposed to enhance the MDA's ground-based mid-course defense element. Nevertheless, the project was terminated under then-Secretary of Defense Robert Gates in April of 2009 due to Pentagon budget adjustments, but revitalized six years later in a similar program, the Multiple Object Kill Vehicle developed by Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, and Boeing. The Multiple Object Kill Vehicle offers several benefits to the ballistic missile defense system. By increasing firepower, it allows multiple vehicles on a single target, all the while reducing dependence on a priori target information. In addition, it works within the standards of existing and planned systems, enhances mission flexibility, and has the ability to intercept multiple independent targets. As an optional payload for mid-course defense systems, the concept mitigates the need to isolate a single lethal object. Out of this Earth In 2017, U.S. missile defense experts spent $112.7 million refining the capabilities and reducing development risks of the future ballistic missile defense multi-warhead killer. The threat dynamics in the contemporary world are dire and include North Korea's missile capabilities, nuclear weapons and space vehicles, Iran's unyielding nuclear ambitions, and China's intercontinental ballistic missiles. Consequently, the Pentagon and its partners in the industry are constantly pressured to engineer the ultimate defense system a faster, adaptive, and highly impactful next-generation interceptor, and to do it by the end of the decade. The Missile Defense Agency plans to hire contractors for a long-term strategy to create a new weapon by 2028. Building upon the performance of existing ground-based interceptors, the next generation should feature innovative command and control technologies, computer processing, flight speed, precision targeting, and sensing discrimination. A senior Pentagon official familiar with such technology has told the national interest, quote, It has to be able to take out the latest generation of ballistic missiles that might proliferate from Iran or North Korea, find its way through a maze of countermeasures, and use an effective filtration system for the optics that can see and pick out the warhead, and hit it every time. He then added, quote, We are asking these teams to come up with the best NGI they can. We went with letting the teams know specific requirements and giving them enough leeway to do the best they can do. Many of the technical specifics were left up to the offerers. The future remains uncertain, and the specifics are unavailable for security reasons, but several competitors are now offering NGI solutions, including a Northrop Grumman Raytheon joint effort to merge Northrop's rocket booster, data networking, and computer expertise with Raytheon's kill vehicle and sensor discrimination improvements. The defense industry is only getting started. Thank you for watching our video. Please subscribe to all our Dark Documentaries channels for more stories about military developments. And don't forget to leave a comment and hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest content.